Hiya! Welcome back to my channel! I know, I know, I know. I've been gone for a minute and a bloody half. I actually sat down this evening and said I'm going to do my two year hair update. The larks, don't watch the edges, yeah, I've got a video coming on that. I don't know how. I don't know how. My subscriber count has somehow managed to double whilst I've been playing Casper. But thank you so much for all the new subs, for the comments. I really do try to, even though I've been, you know, Caspering, is that a word? I do try to um, reply back to everyone's comments or if you send me like an inbox message, I try to reply. Sometimes I'm a week or so late, but I do try to reply to everyone. So thank you so much for your comments. For the follows on Instagram thank you so much I really appreciate it. and I kind of really feel like un what's the word it's not unqualified what's like I don't deserve it because I've just been blown like tumbleweed like the wind I've been gone so I don't know where it's all come from but thank you so much like my last couple of videos I'm like wow so thank you thank you thank you I really really appreciate it and yes I will be making more videos in fact this weekend I'll be driving down to London to go and record a video <laughs> I'm saying this now if it doesn't happen talk bear we are in problems because I promised the people will make a video so yeah um my friend top here don't mind the village where I called her name, whose channel is Sincerely Tops, I'll link it down below. It's an amazing channel, she does hot topics, she does like relationship videos, it's wonderful, check her out. I'm doing a collaborate, co collabo video with her, I think it's going on her channel, maybe we'll do two, so I can put one on this channel, I don't know, but you'll probably see the video, I think a week or two after you've seen this one. If you keep up with me on Instagram, at Mummy Rose, keep up with me on Twitter, at Mummy Rose, then I will pop a video and like a link and all that when that video comes out. Um, so I can't just jump into like doing videos again and just, you know, ghost like that, you know. I have to give reason why I decided to play Casper for a few months. I've kind of been dodging it because when I sit down and I think about, because like I've got my notebook here, I've got like pages and pages, let me show you, I've got pages and pages of notes of like hair videos and stuff. So I've got like a whole heap of notes on my two year hair update in here that I was gonna, you know, go from, but I've been dodging it because there is one big, do you know, excuse my French in this entire video, there's one big fucking purple elephant in the room when I think about why I've been gone. And I've talked to like a couple of friends and my husband and been like, you know, I don't really know if I want to make this video. I don't know if I should, if I shouldn't, it makes me uncomfortable. Um, but what's helped has been talking. That is what's helped. And I know I spent hours, days, weeks, Googling and wanted to see what other people did and how they felt. That's why I am making this video because hell, if I found someone else's video or someone else's blog or someone else's article, then and that helped me, this could help someone else. Kind of general life stuff. Um, I started a new job. Ooh, we give God the glory. Um, yeah, I started a new job, which is great. I really, really enjoy it. Been working on the house. My house looks so much nicer. Oh my gosh, it looks completely different to when you guys have last seen it because when you guys last saw it I had I had a sofa that's all we had we had a sofa in the living room that was it we got a sofa we got a coffee table we got a dining table we got this really nice like divider from Ikea thing you know makes the living room look cute we got a nice tv we got a sound bar like yo oh, it's looking wonderful to God be the glory progress we managed to do something with the second bedroom got a new bed nice king size bed because my husband is six foot two and the toes was just creeping. So I creeped, yeah, over the side of the bed. So we've got a kick size bed now. Everyone's toes is fitting inside the bed, it's wonderful. But yeah, so the house is looking really nice. I got a car, hallelujah. When I live in London, I didn't need a car. I just called everyone else for a lift. But no, living out here, like, it's, it's not possible to live out here with no car. You will just suffer unnecessarily, like, no. So I finally got a car, hallelujah. And it's a good thing too because the job I do, like the job, the place where I work now, no, there's no way I could have worked there and not drive because to drive takes me about 28 minutes. To take a train, like I have to go into Basingstoke, up to Reading, then back, no, no, it's ridiculous. It's like 2 hours and 47, pfft, nah. So that's all the kind of general life stuff I can think of. Back and forth from London, back and forth from London, back and forth from London. Last weekend, my niece turned one. She's teething though, so she was quite grumpy at her party, but it's all right. Happy birthday, Carries. The niece that you're seeing in the vlogs, that was the 
she has turned one she's now one she's not fully walking but she's taking steps she's like big girl now and everything so we had a party my mum came down from Ghana we all celebrated it was beautiful um yeah so back forth to London new job new car house is looking great um yeah okay so purple fucking elephant um right so I was pregnant was being the uh what's the word the key word in the sentence basically i'm trying to think of the smart english way to say it but the, i can't think of it right now that's the operative word or whatever you want to call it um unfortunately um i lost the pregnancy so that is kind of what knocked me for six and i am really feeling proud of myself right now that i managed to say that sentence without tearing up i feel a little bit but there's i'm all right I still have moments when I get really, really down and completely shitty about it, to be perfectly honest. Um, but I'm starting to feel more normal, a lot more normal. And part of that, if I'm perfectly honest, is because I've... What's the, how do I put it? Let go of the stigma of blaming myself. And I think that's what made it really hard for me in the beginning. My husband has been phenomenal. Um, never made me feel like I cry too much or I should be over it or that it was my fault, anything like that whatsoever. Like I've had moments where I've been just a sobbing pile of like just crying like a crazy person on the stairs and he'll just like hold me and pray for me and just he's been the support I didn't know I needed he's been amazing a lot of it I held it in like or, he kept saying like and not in a cruel way but accept that it's happened and if you need to cry cry if you need to scream scream if you need to talk about it talk about it because I didn't really tell anybody the only person that knew basically was my sister and a friend of mine who was there the day I told my sister and no one else knew honestly I didn't want anyone to know I was I felt embarrassed. I don't know. There's this huge stigma around it. It's until either I guess maybe you prod or it happens to you, then you find out so many other people have been dealing with the same thing. And I knew it was common. I'd heard about it. I'd heard like, you know, the statistics and stuff. And I can't think of the statistics off the top of my head now, but I didn't really, really, really grasp how common it was you know like physically putting those statistics in like if I think of all my friends or my female friends or even all my male friends that I know are married or are in relationships if I was to count all of them and then say okay if the statistics say this many out of five that means literally this many out of the people I know I didn't put it in that context and I didn't see it like that until you know I said it to someone and then they said girl I had four before I had this one or I've had four in total or I had two one between this one and one between I didn't realize and that helped a lot it was really early and early is the most common time and i'm talking about really early like kind of first half of five first trimester is when it's so common and one thing that the doctor said to me in years gone by pregnancy tests were not as common or even as sensitive as they are today so you would kind of be missing a couple of periods and then be like oh oh I think I might be pregnant but now you can like find out like way before your pregnancy your period's even due and then be like oh my god I'm having a baby he said that is like a double-edged sword because in one way it's great to know really early because you know early in the other way early miscarriages seem to be so much more uh the occurrences seem to be more because people are finding out or women are finding out much earlier than they would have in the beginning it was really hard um to process all I kept saying was I would have been x number of weeks and days and that's all I kept th that's the only way I kept thinking of it and sometimes I do still sit there and kind of calculate not that I need to calculate but say to myself oh my god I would have hit this milestone that does make me sad but I think one lady that reached out to me said it in the sense that I think she'd had three or four and said that the way she chooses to deal with it is that um, she saw it as, 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 uh, harsh as it may seem. She didn't see it as I've lost my baby. She saw it as the fetus didn't progress. And then it kind of put a block between how personal it is. In all honesty, a lot of the pain, at least for me, came from 
the loss of the dream because I already had thought so far ahead of okay this is what we're going to do financially this is what we're going to do like work-wise this has going to go um you know planned like even when I told my sister like okay I want to come to your house next month then I'm going to bring over some of the things from storage like the crib and blah 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 so at least you can start setting up and oh we're going to have to change like my office into like the baby's room because it's the closest to our bedroom and all this stuff and then when all of that just comes to an end is the like how you can't how did you take all of that away from me because I've already in my mind I've already seen myself playing with my child you've just told no it can't happen no more so for me that was the hardest part that's where a lot of the crying and the sadness came from when I read what that woman had said to me specifically it helped a lot it helped a lot with accepting when I shared it and it helped a lot with trying to come to terms with it when I thought of it in that way so if anyone is watching this and you've been through the same thing you've lost a pregnancy I'm so sorry that's happened to you it's horrible I wouldn't wish it on anyone but unfortunately it affects more women than you know don't let anyone make you feel like you grieve too little or you grieve too much don't let anyone make you feel like you should be grieving a certain way if you do find that you are taking a like it's affecting you for months and months and months and I mean literally waking up crying every day for months and months and months then there is no shame in seeking out counseling or a therapist or something like that or just someone that you can turn to to speak to that's going to be impartial and just hear you out um, there's no shame in that do that um, have a support system and the one thing that I would say that helped me the most don't feel ashamed it's nothing to be ashamed of I felt really really ashamed for a long time I didn't tell my own mother for a long time because I felt like she was gonna judge me the way I was judging myself like you did something wrong that's why the baby didn't make it once I told her and she was you know she prayed for me she cried a little bit with me don't get emotional once I shared it with her, to a huge weight lifted off my shoulders because then it was like, it wasn't really my fault. Um, so don't feel ashamed. That's the biggest thing I would tell you. Even if the doctor said, oh, it was, if they know what could have caused it, it still was not your fault. You didn't cause it. It's not your fault. If you hear anything that I've said in this video, it is not your fault. You didn't do it. If you took more prenatal vitamins, if you didn't drink that extra glass of wine. I had some wine a couple of days before I found out I was pregnant. I later on they said, oh my God, is it because I drank the alcohol? Which is stupid. But you, you clutch at anything to think, could I have prevented it? It wasn't your fault. You didn't do anything wrong. You could not have done anything else better or worse than you did. Nothing you did caused you to lose your bit. Nothing. So yeah, if you take anything that I have said from this video and you have suffered a miscarriage it was not your fault it was not your fault say it over and over again until you believe it it is not your fault so that's my life update hopefully that'll give you an understanding of why i kind of disappeared oh these lights are making me real hot i want to come back and make videos and i've noticed you know from the last couple that i've made that the hair videos seem to be really really popular but i don't want to just make hair videos and there's been so much stuff that i've been passionate about but i feel shy because this is social media when you say something and a someone disagrees with you or you said something incorrect just because you haven't done enough research yet you get to ripped like 10 new assholes and i ain't really feeling to you know i like the one i have so i'm not sure how i feel about making those other videos but hey you know what's the worst that can happen <laughs> don't say that i'm nervous because i don't know how people are going to react to what i have to say and it's not that it's super controversial it's just you know nowadays you put your opinion out there and anyone that disagrees with you wants you to die i'm gonna try it and we're starting off with the club video that i'm doing with top here because that's not my usual you know forte so we'll see how it goes the next couple of videos probably will be hair related videos because I'm kind of overdue to do hair videos I've got a hair video about like you know my two year lock up day happy birthday to you um yeah she's two years old um there's gonna be one about my edges because people cast my edges all the time I get dragged for my edges on Instagram all the freaking time if I disagree with someone on like the shade room or something they will click on my profile because it's an open profile and then just drag me for my edges all the time all the freaking time it don't hurt me no more because I know as soon as someone disagrees with me on a comment I've made they're gonna drag me for my edges my edges have been like this for as long as I can freaking remember um I got my hairline from my mother mom thank you 
and there's nothing I can do about it. I'm gonna do a video about edges and how you know locking my hair has affected that, especially with interlocking because interlocking seems to have like a bad rep in the lock community. One I'm definitely gonna do is about lint, right, and build up because Rosalyn thought that little locks don't get build up. It's a lie. Let me see if I can turn around and show you something. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. Can you see it? There's build up, fam. Can you see that? Can you see the build up? We have to figure a way around this. So we're going, it's going to be an adventure. We're going to figure out how to get rid of build up and lint in locks. So that's why Rose likes to wear her hair down because you can't see it that way. But yeah, do you know what? I'm rambling now. I'm, I'm rambling now. I'm talking a lot of crap. So thank you for watching. I don't know. I might disable the comments on this video because I, I, it's kind of personal and I don't want no one come to tell me no, no bullshit on this video, to be honest. I'll see you in the next one, which I'll probably be looking exactly like this because I'm going to record my two year lock update.